Say like the Vinci we in this motherfucker with Dallas Wild Street right now, man. Alright, man, what's good, my boy? Ain't too much shit, man. Too much shit. Stack and stand prayed up and out the way. Alright, so instead of going all the way back to the beginning, I just wanna ask you, where are you at right now in your music career? What would you say that you were at? I mean, I'm in that pocket right now. I'm in that place in my career and my music, bro, to where, like, I know I can't miss. I, I got that confidence to where, like, every time I get behind a mic and I touch a song, I don't give a fuck if it's making a beat, putting a mix on some shit, nigga rapping, like, I, I know I'm in that pocket at this point. Straight up. Okay, uh, what project you got out right now? We got Sack Life Forever 2 out right now. Uh, we got a lot of shit on the bro. I got so much unreleased music right now. I'm really just nigga shit mapping all this shit out, trying to figure out what I want to drop on what. So shit, Second Life Forever too. That's the main focus though. And we, I'm sorry, and we just dropped the fucking video to God's Gift with Prophecy. So that was my next question. How did you link up with Prophecy for the God's Gift video? Reached out to him. He good people too. He good people. Reached out to bro. Uh, I like the nigga content. I like the nigga work. Uh, I ain't gonna cap to you. Just on some G shit. Uh, he been he 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 been Mo three main director. So like, R. I. P. The fam, bro. But like with the past and him being gone and the type of music that I make, like he already been like bringing that type of shit to his platform. Fucking with three. So it's like shit. Why not? Yeah. Uh, it's like, shit, if you on some young nigga turn up type shit, your best bet is go holla at half pint. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? So, shit, my type of content, probably he, he shoot that type of shit. Okay. Okay. So, I assume that you'll be going back to property with both minutes. How I'm about to start working this shit, I want to start locking in with different directors for different projects. So, shit, and it, yeah. Prophecy gonna fuck with me for this goddamn Sack Life Forever too, but the next tape I drop, I ain't gonna throw the title out there just yet. But yeah, link it with another director, we gonna keep that shit pushing like that. Okay, so. All right, so I'm gonna ask you about the visual game. Since you're saying that you wanna work with different directors every project, so that means that you plan on shooting videos, having certain styles, or everybody else. Yeah. Every video or every project. Um, how, how important do you think visuals are? The most important. Like, it, that's where you seen. That's where motherfuckers be able to, like, tap into your creativity as an artist. You know what I'm saying? So, like, shit, we can put a song out, but we only got so many bars to be able to, you know, tell whatever story we telling on the song. That visual be able to paint that picture for the motherfuckers that ain't able to see that shit vividly for their damn self. So, when you, when you, uh, Make these visuals, do you like leave, leave it all to the director's hands or do you like come up with like a summary? Do you already have like an idea? You spoiled me. So, shout out to Dallas Wild Street because my nigga, I pretty much down there, all my shit coming into everything damn near other than fucking what? God's gift and maybe one other fucking video like out of came to Dallas Wild Street. And like, that's really my goal and my plan when it comes to like reaching out with these different directors, bro. Like, I want to start maxing out the control that I have as the artist and being able to dictate who the fuck I want to work with. So it's like, all right, I got privacy shooting this tape. I want Dallas Wall Street doing all my behind the scenes. I'm like, that's why we here with the interview, all the shit that, that feed it to that motherfucker. I want everything to be connected with child. Cause like shit, y'all niggas been rocking with me since day one. So it's like shit, once we elevate, we elevate together on this shit. How do you feel about uh, being independent versus uh, working with a label formation? I feel like at a certain point of everybody's career, they going to end up having to touch that major if they want to go to a certain level of their career. But, man, you got to put in as much work as possible, your damn self on the front end to be able to really get what you want to receive on the back end. So honestly, I mean, to each his own. I like having full control over my shit or as much control as I possibly can. Everybody else ain't, you know, 
too probably too much worried about it. They rather have as much money up front as they can get. So I mean, if that's the type of shit you're looking for, find the best deal for it. But like, yeah, like my control, I started my own label to where the day that I do got to link up with a label, y'all got to come holler at me as a label owner and not just an artist. Yeah. So yeah, we've been on this shit since day one. So how did, you know, KD is behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? He do a lot of management, calculating moves, and like, how did y'all uh, commit? What, what made you decide that, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, a lot of artists these days, like, that's the main thing that nigga don't have. You hear me loud, say. Especially the type of management that I got. I ain't gonna count so like the shit the shit really crazy. It's been years too. Like, uh, nigga, like he been my big bro like since I was about 17, 18, just away from the music shit. But uh shit, bro I used to rap. And I used to produce for him. <laughs> I used to produce for this nigga, bro. So it's crazy, fam. I'm talking about like nigga. I think probably the first beats I ever sold, bro, as a producer, was to this nigga ass. And boy, him and his daddy taught me the value of my motherfucking beats. Got the... <laughs> I, think, I think these niggas end up getting down to like 15, 20 beats for $100, right? Oh, man, same, same. And I'm talking about nigga, when I tell you I was lit, I ain't never sold my beats, bro. So it was the first time, so it was like, shit, we had already had like a personal connection, a personal relationship on top of like, we were doing music together. But shit, this was back like, that was like, what, 08, 09 type shit when we linked up. Double back, come back around. Bro, I was about to sit there and take another lap with this music shit and rap. So shit, he hit me up, this is 2015. And he hit me up like, hey, bitch, I need some beats. I'm like, I bet. Nigga pulled up on my ass. I'm playing some beats of shit. And he fucking with the high. I don't know what made me stop in the middle of being able to make some money <laughs> on some shit. But I like, bro, I want this nigga to hear this shit I've been working on. So boom. I like, bro, hold on. Like, check this shit out real quick. That nigga listen to that shit. And fam, like, probably like less than an hour after this nigga left my motherfucking crib. That shit was on my head. It was on his head, bro. Nigga, I called this nigga ass. I can't remember if I called him first or that nigga hit my ass first, bro. But we both got online like, fam. I'm like, bro, I want you to manage me, fam. He was like, bitch, I was about to sit there and say the same shit, fam. Like, I want to work with you on your shit. Like, the shit that I let him hear, he just, he fucked with that shit and believed in that shit so much to where that nigga, he literally stepped in my shit to extend his rap career. But he left that motherfucker putting his shit to the side and going 100% all the way in with my shit. How important do you think having a manager is? The most. Like, if... Not really. I take that back. If you, if, if, you, if you like me and you wear all the, so many hats, bro, like, I can't, I can't manage all this shit by my damn self. You feel me? Like, you might just be an artist and all you do is rap. You feel me? Like, you might not need a manager. But shit, the more hats you wear, yeah, you're gonna need somebody to help you out with that shit. Especially if you wanna be on some boss shit, everybody's need a team. Straight up. So shit, I made my nigga equal. <laughs> Real shit. So we know you from the city, right? Yeah, sir. So where where specifically are you from in Dallas? Alright, so Well what good is where you where you claim where you real? Shit is that, so people be jab, jab, jabbing at this shit all the time, like, my first fucking address ever was on Trunk Street over there in the South, bro. But I had moved from the South when I was like six, I was over there at Single Hills until like I was about a teenager and shit, moved around, dipped to the Soto and shit when my mama moved for a little while and then here. Fam, I think I was probably like about 18 when I touched down over there in Woodtown, and like, out of everywhere that I done been, like shit, that 232 side just stuck with a nigga ass, bro. Like everybody embraced the nigga like I done grew up over there since day one. So that's why it's 232 on my side with everything. Like I really been all around Dallas type shit. Okay, so with that being said, does uh, the 232 side, does that influence your music the most or is it just all the mental type of the world? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what? Low key, yeah. 
it, 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 I ain't never really thought about that shit, but like it do. Like my upbringing and shit, it is what it is from where I've been at. But like a lot of the shit that I speak on in my music and the shit that I done went through or whatever, like that was over there in Woodtown. Cause like shit, by the time I was like about 14, 15, most of my niggas I grew up with, them niggas was doing stretches or like just out the picture type shit. So. I was solo dolo for some years. I was just only rocking by myself, just moving by myself. I've had folks that I fuck with, but like when I touched down in Woodtown, it was like it was back on the hood shit again instead of just being by my damn self. Okay, okay. What's, uh, what, what you got coming next? What, what you got a new, you got the next single picked out already? Or you gonna make the piece pick it or? Low key, I, me, me and my bro, I already had the next five picked out. And the crazy thing about it is, at this point right now, those are still the top leading five songs that's on the tape. So the people that I already chose it, even though we had already set that shit in stone, so that shit, that shit crazy. Yeah. I mean, what's the plans on uh, pushing the, the, the music forward, like uh, outside of the city? What I'll just about to say, outside, get outside, see it, OT, like shit, we about to be on that plane like a motherfucker. Shit, everybody in the city, they know us, they been fucking with us since day one. <clears throat> now it's just time to show motherfuckers that next step, now it's time to show everybody like who all really fucking with us. Like we can sit there and say numbers don't lie, this, that, and other, all that shit, but yeah. We better start taking these flights and showing y'all motherfuckers like, look nigga, they fucking with us in Chicago, they fucking with us out here in goddamn Bama, they fucking with us out here in Cali, they, I can tell you that shit all day, but y'all just stay tuned, we, we better start vlogging all that shit.